Good day, collectors and viewers. Social Distance Warrior is back, and today we're going to look at Princess Leia as she appeared at the beginning of Return of the Jedi in Boosh disguise. So, Princess Leia first appeared in Return of the Jedi, which is the third movie of the original Star Wars trilogy. Actually, number six, if you looked at all the movies, including the prequels. Uh, and it's the Return of the Jedi, and it's at the beginning when our faithful heroes decide they're going to go and rescue Han Solo. So, uh, at the beginning of that movie, again, we get a really cool intro with the droids coming to Jabba's palace. And um, just like the original Star Wars movie, it almost gives it some nice closure because that started with the droids as well. And then they make their way to this palace and we always wondered what Jabba the Hutt looked like because in the original movies, before the special editions, we never actually saw Jabba the Hutt. We only heard of him. And uh, we, it was only mention of him. And then Boba Fett, of course, at the end of Empire Strikes Back, took on in Carbonite and then they spent a countless years it looks like I'm not sure what the exact year date was between Empire and Jedi but there was a number of years there between that where they had to infiltrate Jabba's palace so of course our droids go first and they're unsuccessful and then the next person that shows up is this bounty hunter named Boosh who doesn't go by a name when they walk in but it's our Princess Leia and she heads over to try and save her beloved Han Solo from the clutches of Jabba the Hutt and she comes with Chewbacca and chains and I remember as a kid watching this whole scene and saying you know what's going on how did Chewbacca get captured where 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 is this place who are all these aliens it was a very very uh terrifying and at the same time very interesting and place and of course all these scenarios and all these scenes would make amazing action figures as a kid and you watched it and you were just like mesmerized uh, with what was happening on screen so of course Princess Leia would get made into action figure form uh, in 1983 as well as part of the Return of the Jedi wave from Kenner uh, it was the 65 back that's the figure that we have right here in front uh, I did have this kid figure originally this is not the original figure because that one doesn't have the greatest uh, paint job on it but there she is princess leia in the nice bounty hunter outfit uh, she does come with a really long weapon so it's almost like a rifle slash staff that she can hold in her hand and it's bigger than she is you can see it's very very tall uh really cool accessory again very unique and you know that only she would come with an accessory like this so it's not hard to mistake that uh i am missing of course the helmet for this figure which definitely defines it and makes it. But unfortunately for the review, I don't have that helmet. I've misplaced it. But this is the figure. And this is, a you know, almost, well, this year it'll be 40 years of Return of the Jedi. It's 2023 right now. And you can just see how amazing the sculpt was on this figure from beginning, uh, from front to back, of course, uh, top to bottom. Uh, they came a long way with how they were sculpting these action figures from where they started with the original ones after Star Wars and then worked their way up to Jedi. So that's Princess Leia. She's got a really cool head sculpt as well. Let's bring up close considering the technology and the sculpting at the time. There she is with her hair tied up in a bun in the back there. And she's got a nice little backpack sculpted onto her outfit there. The paint operations are amazing on this thing. The sculpting is great. There's a sculpted belt. Uh, her armor here has some ribbed effects there. You know, her outfit has wavy cloth, um, um, sleeves on the sides there of course as well as articulation so as far as articulation goes on this character here you can move her head side to side so you do have that articulation you can move her arms up and down okay and then of course where we work our way down over here to where her legs are where the slit is here you can move her legs up and you can see the foot peg there underneath the both legs work the same way this one's got a bit of the bottom part of her skirt hanging off the side nicely in the wind but you can see it's a very very nice paint job on the character there if we turn her up we can see she's got foot pegs there underneath so she can stand in your displays and she can stand on stands and then that's what she looks like from the side okay if we turn around to the back there she is in the back and you can see they didn't cheap out on the sculpting over here on the back everything is nicely sculpted it was actually a favorite figure of mine it's actually two figures in one because if you have the helmet with this figure as well as a kid when you're a kid you can disguise this character as a bounty hunter and use it as a completely separate character and then of course take the helmet off and have it as princess leia when she's rescuing han solo so that's what she looks like from the back 
if we bring it up close here, we can see it says Hong Kong and uh, LFL 83, Lucasfilm Limited, 1983. So that's Princess Leia in Bush disguise as she was originally released back in 1983. So the next time we'd see Princess Leia in Bush disguise would be once Star Wars made its comeback. So it went through its dark years through the mid 80s all the way into the 90s and of course had its renaissance where it came back with the Timothy Zahn novels, the Heritage Empire novels, uh, as well as the uh, Dark Horse comics. The Dark Empire comics, which actually continued on the story. And I was, I mean, I was more than happy to see Star Wars make a comeback. And then, of course, Hasbro slash Kenner uh, released um, images or information that they're going to re-release the Power of the Force 2 line. Um, and that would be an extension or I guess you can say continuation of the original Star Wars toys. But again, reinvented um, with modern sculpting. And we wouldn't get... Um, Princess Leia and Bush disguise in the original year, which is 95, we'd get her in 96. Um, strangely, not on a Star Wars card, but they released another multimedia event for Star Wars because we were waiting on the special edition movies to come out. So while that was happening and they had all this new merchandise, they decided they're going to do an extra story that happens takes place between uh, Empire and Jedi, and it was called Shadows of the Empire. It's actually a really cool storyline. There there was a whole multimedia event on it. There was a novel, there were video games on it, and of course there were action figures on it, and there was comic books on it, and Princess Leia and Boosh Disguise came out on a Shadows of the Empire card back, so much to my rejoice to get the action figure, it was kind of strange to see her uh, on a different card back than you know Return of the Jedi. But a welcome addition, of course. Anything brand new Star Wars at the time when there was nothing was amazing. So that's this figure over here. I have her on card. So we can have a take a look. So it's a brand new sculpt. Uh, a lot of these characters, of course, at the time came with these, you know, gimmicky um, holographic images on the side, which is nice. You can see this. I mean, this figure is almost 30 years old. It stands the test of time. It looks really nice on the card back. Where the other card backs were initially orange or slash red, they looked orange. Uh, then when they went to the next card backs, they were green. This was in between, so these ones were purple. And there was a number of figures that came out in the Shadows of the Empire multimedia event. You can see it's a brand new sculpt of Princess Leia. And she does have a very, very similar accessory to the one that she came with originally in 1983. Uh, and their helmet's in package there. And of course, you can see she's holding a thermal detonator. So that's the card back there on the front. Take a nice look at that. And over here it says Leia in Bush disguise with blaster rifle. And Bounty Hunter Helmet. So if we turn that around to the back, and we have a look there, we can see on the back there, I love these little bios, bios here. I used to cut them out. Uh, it gives you a little a more description on Princess Leia. Again, there wasn't much in the line of uh, lore for Star Wars at the time. So anything that you could get or read was amazing. You could find out more about the characters or more about the situation that they were in. Uh, a lot more information. So that's her card back there says she stands 1.5 meters tall and she's a princess of Alderaan. She's an imperial senator, a cell leader of the Rebel Alliance. Uh, down here on the bottom, we can see there's a few other vehicles. Here, there's a snowspeeder and, of course, Dash Rendar's Outrider, which is part of this multimedia event because you actually fly that in the video game Shadows of the Empire. Over here, they made these uh, special deluxe packs. Uh, strange deluxe packs, even at the time they were strange. I think I never ended up picking up Han Solo's, but I did pick up Luke's and the Stormtrooper there, the crowd control, because I wanted an extra Stormtrooper and the Luke's. That's the closest thing you're going to get to a skiff for years in the Power of the Force 2 line. So it was a welcome addition to have some vehicles. Uh, here at the bottom part, you can see there's some other characters that were in the story. So the crossover of the story was all over the place. The comic books told the Bounty Hunter tales, and, and then the novel told the whole tale of Shizor and uh, his battle with Darth Vader to try and impress the Emperor. And then, of course, the video game, you had you as Dash Rendar and you told the story through his eyes. And it took place from the end of Empire and went on from there. So in between Empire and Jedi. So those are some more of the figures that came out as well at the time. So definitely a welcome addition. And it was expanding the line for Star Wars. So that's... Princess Leia and Boost Disguise carded. We're going to have a look at her loose here as well. Just get her back up there without knocking anything over. So that's Princess Leia there. We can see how far we've come sculpting-wise in the characters. Uh, one noticeable thing here on the Power of the Force 2 line when it did come out 
is that the characters, there wasn't a scale initially. Every single character was tall. I mean, Chewbacca was a little bit taller than everybody else, and Darth Vader was a little bit taller, but everybody was tall, and the Princess Leia is obviously way too tall uh, compared to the other characters um, that were around her. But, you know, we took er, took everything the way, we, the way it came. It was just nice to have new Star Wars figures for sure. So she comes with her staff slash blaster rifle, that's this guy here. It's very similar to that original one, except it doesn't have that little trigger handle the original one had, but that is the staff that she comes with, and she can hold that in her arm, and, and you can have her displayed in Jabba's palace. So there's not much to that accessory there. Uh, she also has, of course, her helmet on here, which we're going to look at in a little more detail in a second, and she has a cape. Now, if we just turn this figure around to the back momentarily, we can see uh, how much further we've come. With this character from the back, we see the cape covering the whole back of her there, but it is a separate piece, so this cape actually does come off. We're going to remove that just to have a look at it. Uh, it does have two slots where it goes into the back here. There's a little peg hole here on the back where you can slot that in, and of course there's a little slot here at the top of the cape as well that goes and fits in nicely. It's nicely sculpted right at the top where her shoulder is there, and that's where that sits. Okay, but we're going to take that off just to have a look at the character in detail. So as far as the character, we can see um, at the time five points of articulation. But of course, like most figures, I think almost every finger in the Power of the Force 2 line, they've added waist articulation as well, which is nice. So as far as the head, that turns side to side. Okay, the arms move up and down. The thermal detonator that is in her hand, it's nicely sculpted. It's painted silver, but it's not removable. So that's fixed in her hand. So you can only basically do the one scene where... She walks in, and when Jabba's not listening to her demands, she turns on that thermal detonator. So that's from that scene there. Uh, waist articulation, so we can turn her side to side. And of course, if we move our way down here below the belt, which is nicely sculpted and painted as well, you can move her legs up, okay, and down. Both both of them do the same thing there. We can see underneath here that we do have foot pegs on her legs there. And of course, underneath there, it does say 1996 LFL Lucasfilm Limited and Kander China on the other foot there. So that's Leia Bush from the front. That's what she looks like from the side. And then that's what she looks like from the back. And you can see fully painted, even though we took off that cape, they still painted the back of that uh, bandolier that she's got on there and the back of her backpack there, jet pack, whatever you want to call it. Uh, armor pack it's on the back there and of course the belt and you can see the nice paint operations and the leggings and it's got that ribbed effect that the original one had as well so it's depicted really well it's a nice action figure for many many years so that's what she looks like now we're going to take her helmet off and have a look at that so bear with me for one second here Let's just get that helmet off we'll bring that up close just so we can see it so we can see this nice paint detail on that helmet uh, i found that helmet really cool as a kid it just looks awesome very intimidating uh, very menacing like a bounty hunter should look and it's got a nice color to it as well with the little mouthpiece here and then of course the lens for the eyes up here and the nice detail on there so they've gone nicely on the detail for that helmet front to back you can see all the way around there and that just fits on her head and it's a it's a harder plastic it's not very soft it's a harder one so it's not mushy it sits on there well and you can see that's i mean that's almost 30 years old now itself and uh it's still standing the test of time. So that's her helmet. Without the helmet on, we'll bring Princess Leia up close. It's basically the same head sculpt that she had on the Power of the Force 2 figure, but she doesn't have her buns. Uh, same face, though. She does have the hair tied nicely in the back. Uh, the face sculpt is a lot better than that original one. She does have the hair coming down around her ears there. Okay. Give it a nice, more realistic look to it. Uh, they did paint her lips pink, which was kind of odd, but... Uh, it's there. They kind of look pale. She almost looks like she's sick. But that's Princess Leia and Boosh disguise when you don't have her helmet on, right? So that's what she looks like from the side with the helmet off. And then that's what she looks like from the back on her bun there. You can see the sculpting is nice, nicely painted on her hair there. So that is our Power of the Force 2 slash Shadows of the Empire release of Princess Leia and Boosh disguise. Okay, so now we move along for our next release of Princess Leia and Boosh disguise. Of course, the line would be very successful for Hasbro, and it would take many twists and turns as the special editions came out, and then the prequels came out, and then because of the prequels and all the new characters that Star Wars was introducing, we didn't actually get another Princess Leia in Boosh Disguise 
until 10 years later in 2006 as part of the Saga collection. So a lot of stuff was coming out media, multimedia wise for Star Wars, video games. We had the new prequel movies, the three of them. And they finally started to revisit the original trilogy characters, especially as they got better with their sculpting and technology with the characters. And then this one stood the test of time for a long time. A much improved sculpt, that's this figure over here, over what we've seen previously. All of a sudden now Hasbro is paying attention to height on the characters as well. They're trying to get that height, you know, um, sculpting and accuracy right compared to figure to figure. And you can see how much shorter this character is compared to the Power of the Force 2 version. Almost like it's a completely different action figure. You can see that much smaller, much shorter. But to scale with how the figures would be uh, looking at each other over here. So you can see in detail, we'll bring her up close over here, the Saga Collection one. Uh, they've gone even more realistic now on the helmets. The helmet is bigger than that Power of the Force 2 or original one was it, to her head, just like it was in the movie. Uh, the helmets were a little bit larger, so they've managed to get the accuracy on that. They've gone a lot more detail-wise with the uh, strap bandolier slash belt. It's a separate piece that's sitting over the top there. She does have her um, staff or slash blaster rifle in hand. Uh, but one thing I didn't like about some of the figures at the time is they pre-sculpted parts of their bodies. So you kind of stuck in that pose again instead of having the ability to use her in any kind of scene that you wanted to. So uh, let's take the staff out of her hand just to have a look at what that looks like. So we'll bring that up close. Now, it's not a straight black color. They've taken the time to paint it. It's like it's almost like a metallic gray. Uh, a lot more detail on the staff. It is a little bit wonky or wobbly here in the middle. It's a little bit soft. But that's okay because if you're holding it straight up, it's not really going to warp that much. It just kind of warps where her hand's holding it. So other than that, it's pretty good. Um, it's nicely detailed. You can see they've come a long way. And it's scale-wise, it's a lot better to the way it's supposed to be the way movie accuracy is for this accessory. So that is her staff. As far as the figure herself, she has articulation here at the head. She can move it side to side. We'll remove her helmet in a second. We just want to have a look at her and boost this guy's first. Uh, we've got an added articulation now, which some of the figures were getting. Uh, swivel at the shoulder over here. So you can lift that arm all the way up, which you couldn't do before, and turn it all the way around. You have that nice motion there. You don't have it, unfortunately, here at the elbow at the elbow it's a pre-sculpted pose you're stuck in that uh, curved elbow you can't really do much with the figure other than hold the staff but there is a swivel there so you can move that up and down uh, you do have that same motion here at the wrist as well so if I bring her up close here you can see at the wrist there as well there's a little slit and you can turn her arm uh, hand there as well and she's got of course nice detail here of the little spikes on her gloves you can see the attention to detail they put on there but unfortunately with the figure, you're basically only use you have here for it is to hold that staff or to hug somebody while they're having a drink at the cantina bar. But that's basically what you have there. It's kind of positioned just to stand in your Jabba's palace. And that's the one that I have standing in my Jabba's palace. So as far as articulation here at the body, at the waist, uh, you can't really turn the figure. I don't have any motion there to turn it. There is a belt there. Let's see if we lift that belt up, if there's anything underneath. No. So no motion there to turn side to side. It's a little bit tight. There we go. You can swivel that side to side over there. Okay. The belt was in the way. Uh, as far as the legs down here, there is articulation to turn her leg there, uh, right where it meets the her hip. But because of these thick pant legs, so the skirt... You can't really do much. There's a bit of a slit there in the front, but it's such a hard plastic. This figure is only going to be standing in your collection. Uh, as far as down here, we do have knee articulation, which is awesome. It was a, a first for a lot of the characters, of course, at the time. And of course, because you can turn the knee, you can also turn it side to side. So you can have, you know, the legs crossing over one another. But again, not much movement there because of the, the skirt. Uh, down here at the bottom, the legs, the feet are very small, so there is no added articulation here at the bottom. It's just yeah, so again, added articulation on there at the knees, but nothing here at the ankles, but that's what she looks like from the front. Okay, so we'll just put her arm down there momentarily. You can see the nice paint job on the character. Uh, as far as her other arm over here is actually pretty neat. Uh, same thing, she does have that swivel there at the shoulder, and then she, sorry, the ball joint at the shoulder, and then you can swivel her at the wrist there and then of course she has her hand 
painted with the spikes there, you can turn her at the wrist as well. Extra motion there right at the top of the wrist. And then she's got her thermal detonator in hand. And that thermal detonator, bear with me here, and this one actually comes out. Okay, just to show you there. There's a little peg that sits in her hand to hold it, but it is a removable accessory. There's not much to it, it's just a ball painted. The ball is a little bit uh, uh, warp sculpted, but it does have the top of that trigger where she motions that trigger when she turns it on. So it does have that at the top of there. So you can see the detail that they put on this. And obviously a really cool feature for that is if you don't want to have it in her hand, to have her hand free, there's a little spot to put it on her belt right there. See that little opening there? You plug that thermal detonator in. See if I can get it in there. My tiny little hands. And you can stick that on her belt as well so she doesn't have to hold it. So a really cool feature that this figure has unique to itself. So that's a Leia Bouche from the front from the Saga collection. That's what she looks like from the side. Okay, that's what she looks like from the back. And of course, this uh, cape accessory here is, is uh, it's not removable, but it is stuck, sculpted onto the belt slash bandolier that comes across here. So that's the separate piece there from the rest of her. And that's what she looks like from the back. And of course, I didn't show you from underneath feet wise. There she is with her feet foot pegs in there. And now let's take her helmet off and see what she looks like underneath. So let's take that helmet off and we can see Princess Leia without her boost disguise. So in this one here, they've given her a full ponytail. Uh, the head is on a ball. So you do have that as a removable accessory. If you wanted to take her head off and try to, you know, do some... Um, reimagining or have somebody else's head stuck on there you can do that as well but that's how the face sculpt is now the face sculpt itself it leaves a little bit to be desired it's not the greatest face sculpt it is an improvement over the previous one but it took them many many years to nail some of the star wars characters likenesses and she was always one that had that issue so because of that i normally have the helmet on this character and the way her hair comes down it almost looks like she's got a a beard slash chin strap traveling underneath there so not the greatest head sculpt, but again, it's nice to have that helmet more realistic and able to sit on there. Now, as far as the helmet itself, we can see the detail on there. Uh, they've painted the side here, so there's wear and tear on it. It almost looks like a rusted copper coming across there. So it's a really nice, cool paint operation. It looks weathered. Uh, that's what it looks like from the front. Okay, you can see a lot more detail there. They've gone a lot further with the painting of that helmet compared to the previous one. Uh, as far as the side, there we go there. That's what she looks like on the top. They've sculpted the top part really well there. And of course, that's the back of the helmet. And if we put that helmet back on, we'll do a nice little comparison between this one and the Power of the Force 2 helmet, just so you can see. Let's put them over here side by side so you can see how far the sculpting has come. You can see how much smaller the Power of the Force 2 one is. Power of the Force 2 one almost looks like an adult costume for a Halloween party. And then the Saga Collection one looks like an actual movie prop, the way it's sitting and its size and its color and its shape. So that's our Saga Collection, uh, Princess Leia and Boosh Disguise. Okay, so we'd have to wait a number of years, almost like it's a trend. We went from 1983 to the Power of the Force 2 released in 1996. And then we went to 2006, which we just looked at the Saga Collection version of Leia Bush, and then we'd have to wait almost 10 years, so this time nine years, in 2015. So there's the big purchase uh, between uh, Lucasfilm selling, du Lucas selling Disney uh, to Disney, Lucasfilm, uh, Star Wars and his whole franchises, and of course, we had a number of weird releases, and then some of the stuff that they were working on still ended up getting released, and we get a release of Princess Leia in Bush Disguise, on a Black Series card back. So they did Black Series. It was very confusing. They stopped the Vintage Collection stuff. And then they went to Black Series. And they had a 3 3 quarter inch line of Black Series. And they had a 6 inch line of Black Series. And the 3 3 quarter inch ones initially came on card backs. And all the figures were falling off the card backs. It was actually a nightmare. I don't know what they were, how they were gluing them onto the card backs. But somehow Hasbro forgot how to do the packaging part of their toy industry. So... Uh, she was a welcome release. Again, she was an improvement over the one that came in the Saga collection. And in 2015, we got her in a new 3.5-inch fame. So that's this figure over here. 
See if I don't knock anybody over bringing her forward. So we can see we've gotten uh, a lot better again between the last one to this one. So a big difference between the previous release to this one here is that there's not as much going on on the front of this character here. Uh, the likeness, the sculpt, the proportions are a lot more appealing, accurate. Uh, they've gone away with that swivel elbow, which you couldn't do anything with, and they've given us full articulation on this character. And of course, the helmet is, is a little bit smaller. So uh, it was larger on the previous figure. They tried to match that to the movie. But again, it was probably a little bit large considering the head underneath, and they managed to get that sculpt a lot better on this one over here. Uh, a lot of these figures were slept on because, of course, when Disney had to take over and they went to this 3.75-inch line, uh, they weren't appealing at all. The card backs were very dark. It was just a black background on the card back. You couldn't even see the characters in some of them, not to mention they were falling off the bubble. So she was a welcome new release. Uh, she's a brand-new sculpt compared to the previous one that we had. I'll bring her up close so you can see sculpting on the helmet. Uh, it's more reminiscent of the original one, so the front part of her mask here that, that looks like leather here is a nicer um a brighter brown as opposed to the saga one which was a darker brown is a little more dull looking so definitely more appealing when you have it sitting on your shelf as well as her costume and her outfit too the the brown is a lot lighter than that previous one was uh they have not gone to a metal look on the strap slash bandolier on this one they went to a darker gray uh, to try and put some contrast on there. I kind of prefer the one better because it looks a little more weathered when it had that metal look on there. But still a welcome addition here for the character. She does come with her staff here and the staff has gotten smaller than the previous one because they're trying to match it to the scale or the height of the of the figure slash character. Uh, less detail on this one than the previous one had, but it's a thicker plastic, which is nice. And she's basically just holding that there anyway. You're not really going to look at it in detail, but it would have been nice if the sculpting was a little bit better on this guy here. The other one, the, the Saga Collection one, was a lot better sculpting-wise. There's more detail, more grooves on it. But that is her accessory, and of course it's in a brighter gray slash silver color. As far as the character herself, uh, articulation-wise, we're dealing with a lot more uh, sophistication now in the 2015. So we can turn her head you know, side to side, a little bit of movement front to back, but she does have, because she has her helmet on, it's kind of stopping that movement. But we'll look at that with the helmet off in a second. Uh, this separate piece here, that's her belt slash bandolier, is sitting over the top of her chest piece there. She does have swivel there at the shoulder, so you can have full articulation at the top of her arm. She does have it at the elbow, so yay to that. That's obviously an improvement over the previous one. It's why a lot of us needed to have this character. And then she does have it here at the wrist as well. So you can turn her wrist side to side as well, articulation-wise. And that goes for both arms, okay? Uh, as far as the skirt, they've still used a hard plastic there. She's not going to be sitting. It would have been nice to have this part cloth because then we can have her sit. I mean, there is a slit there, so you can move the leg up a little bit. But this that's the basic articulation or pose you're going to have from the hip down. Uh, she does have articulation there at the knee. And same thing, you can swivel that side to side. And then if we look down over here at her feet, we can see that she has motion on her feet there to turn that. There is a there is articulation there as well. You can see the color inside there is a lighter brown, but because the top, the top part of her boot here covers it, you don't really see it. So you do have added articulation there as well. So that's what she looks like from the front. We lift her up to have a look underneath. We can see she does have foot pegs. They're kind of shallow foot pegs, so it's hard to get her to stand on any kind of a stand. You may have to use a sticky tack or just hope that her staff can hold it in place. And her staff's actually pretty good. If you position the staff right, she can lean on her staff and she'll never fall over. So that's what she looks like underneath. Uh, over here in this hand here, you'll notice that she does have the thermal detonator in hand, just like that Power of the Force 2 figure had. So I'll try and bring that up into the camera just so we can have a look. Now, unfortunately, that is sculpted in her hand. There is articulation at the wrist, but it's sculpted in there. You're not going to be moving that. So one thing you'll notice right away with this one, since we just looked at the previous one, is that her gloves don't have the painted little spikes on them like the Saga Collection one did. Just bring the Saga Collection one up here just so you can see it for a second. See how nice those spikes were painted on there? So they've omitted that. They haven't gone all out on there. They're sculpted on there very lightly, but they're not painted on. 
So that's what Princess Leia and Boosh looks like from the front. That's what she looks like from the side. And then if we turn around to the back, we can see that her cape over here that she's got on is a nice cloth material. So they've gotten away from the plastic, which is a nice, it's a first. And it's basically draped sitting over the top of that bandolier there. And then you can just bring it down to position it the way you want. She does have a backpack here on the back. They've done the detail on the backpack and it is removable. I'm just going to pull that off to show you. Bring it up close and you can see they've even painted on the little warning signs or whatever's on there for the canisters. Maybe she's wearing something that's explosive there on the back. So that's pretty neat when they give you that extra detail on the character. It's always nice and it's nice that it's a removable piece and it just has a little slot there in the back where you peg that in. And it's nice. It sits in there pretty firm so it's not going to be going anywhere. And you can see over here on the back that she's got the rest of her bottom part of her outfit there boots some of the paint is kind of wearing out over here it was oversprayed it wasn't quality control wasn't the greatest on some of these um, black series figures but then it definitely was a nice welcome new addition of the character and it is definitely the ultimate sculpt of princess leia in the bush disguise so that's what she looks like let's take her helmet off to have a look at how far we've come on the face sculpt if i can get that helmet off so let's just have a quick look at the helmet first just so we can see so we can see that the detail on the helmet is definitely very reminiscent of that original one that came out in 1983 that came out in the movie and it's nice because the uh, little lens here on the top of her helmet the bottom one's black and the top one's it's hard to see on camera I don't know if you can tell but it's like a dark green so there's a nice contrast between the two of them there detail wise uh, the little scope or whatever she has at the front of her helmet here is positioned nicely it sticks out further in the front the sculpting is really good there on the top of the helmet and then if we turn the helmet here over to the side we can just show you what that looks like as well okay and then of course we turn that around to the back just to see that it's painted all the way around so that's princess leia's helmet so let's have a look at princess leia without her helmet on okay drum roll um we've come a long way it's a lot better than that previous one was but still, something seems a little bit off. And I found that a lot of the figures that came out in the uh, Black Series 3 3 quarter inch line, the skin tones were, were all over the place. They were very pale on some of the figures. Uh, and even some of the paint operations, like there was a, you know, a, a Biggs dark lighter and an X-Wing outfit. And that is orange on the outfit. Like it stands out entirely different from the figures that were in the... Uh, the rest of the X-Wing X -wing pilots that you have at hand. So it's, you can't really play, put them together. You can't position them together because he stands out. Uh, so that's what the head sculpt looks like. We bring her up close. So she's got nice, you know, red lips, the red, the red lipstick on there. The eyes are painted a lot better than they were on the previous one. So you can, there's pupils in there. There's uh, nice detail on them. And then that's what she looks like from the side. They've added a nice you know, piece of hair hanging over, almost hanging over her eyes there and then of course the one that's stranding there in front of the ears which is nice and then she has her buns there of course the bun in the back so it's come a long way it's a nice figure proportionally it's an amazing figure it's probably as good it's going to get for us with the figure from a movie that's 40 years old now but that is our princess leia and boost disguise from the black series line okay so that figure of princess leia and boost disguise that we had in black series We'd get a re-release of it when Hasbro decided to release the Vintage Collection again. Uh, we got a Vintage Collection version of Princess Leia and Boost Disguise, which we never had before, on a Vintage Collection card. So I have that on card back, and it's exactly the same figure as the one we just looked at from the from the Black Series 3 3 quarter inch. But you can see she's on a Return of the Jedi card. How nice is that? Uh, with a nice picture of her from the movie right there. And, uh, of course, I love this where the helmet's separate from in a bubble than the rest of the figure, which is awesome. Uh, the bubble's, of course, a little bit big, but nonetheless, we get this figure, which is exactly the same character we just looked at. Uh, it's almost exactly the same paint job. The head sculpt, which is supposed to be a little bit better, is basically the same thing. Maybe just the, the eye pupils are painted a little bit darker on the character. So it's hard to really get the new face scan technology, which they were started doing on those characters at the time with these ones because they're trying to reuse an existing mold. If they made a brand new head sculpt, we'd probably be better off. And you know, if you don't want to remake these figures, Hasbro in the future, why not just have a Hasbro Pulse exclusive where you have all the different 
heads for your main characters, brand new head sculpts that can fit onto these figures and we can basically reuse the figures then, right? I don't mind. I'll pay a premium to have, you know, a realistic version of Princess Leia's head sitting on my Boosh figure uh, where I can just reuse the figure. So she has her uh, blaster rifle slash staff in there. She does have the backpack accessory there. She does have her helmet over here. And of course, she does have the cape sitting around the back of the package there. Let's see if I can turn it to the side just to show you. Yeah. And then it, that's the card back with the Kenner logo there on the front. Let's turn it around the back to have a quick look. So on the back here, we can see it's VC-134, uh, and there's some of the other figures that were released. Of course, this came out the same year as that uh, Jabba's Sail Barge. So we have some more figures in there from Jabba's Palace, as well as some figures from the new multimedia from Disney, uh, Solo and Last Jedi, as well as Rogue One, the Scarif Stormtrooper. So that's what our figure looks like on card. And that's the most recent ultimate version of Princess Leia in Boosh Disguise. So, a couple more things we want to mention here. We want to bring up the Black Series version of the character. Uh, because we do have one. Uh, we do have a Black Series version that came out in 2015 in the Blue Wave. So we have a Princess Leia in Boosh Disguise with ultimate articulation and paint operations. So you can see night and day the figure paint operations and stuff on this thing is amazing. Uh, they've nailed it. They've knocked it out of the park. Uh, she has her helmet on. She does have her thermal detonator. It's not stuck in her hand. It is a removable accessory, which we're going to look at in a second. She does have her staff, which is nice and big and and, and uh, a solid plastic, so she can hold on to that. You don't have to worry about it bending. And she does have you know full articulation, which we're going to look at. So let's take the staff out first, take a quick look at that. So it's a nice long staff. Uh, Detail-wise, not much to look at on there. It's just the standard staff. It's in like a dark, almost like a grayish blue color. So nothing fancy there, nothing painted on there weather weathered wise. They just gave us a nice accessory that she holds in the movie, which is nice to have. So that's not much to it, but that is her staff. As far as the figure herself, you can see she has her helmet on there. The helmet's a nice scale to the rest of the body. She does have the separate belt slash bandolier there. You can see that the ammunition and stuff on the belt is painted in a different color there on the top, which is a nice addition there. Uh, the nice color tones, lots of color tones on this figure. There's a lot going on there. It's not a boring looking figure. It definitely stands out. Looks like a bounty hunter. And you can see on the visor there, it's got the green on the top part here and then a nice black lens over the eyes. Uh, and of course they painted the nice silver at the tip of the helmet over here and there's some weathering there on the side. And if we turn it around the other side, I see some weathering coming around the front there. So definitely a really nice likeness of this character. They knocked it out of the park as far as sculpting on this character. As far as articulation, she does have a ball there at the top of her shoulder. So full articulation there. Same thing at the elbow over here, full articulation at the elbow. And of course, at the wrist, you can turn the wrists uh, side to side. She does, she does have the spikes painted on the back of her gloves on this figure version. All they'd have to do is take this figure and, and uh, use this one as the sculpt for the three three quarter inch one. And we'd have a perfect three three quarter inch figure. So she does have articulation there at the wrist as well. So you have some added articulation, which is nice. Uh, as far as the waist here, she does turn. She does have movement there at the top of her chest back and forth, side to side. The belt kind of gets in the way. You can't really do too much. As far as the skirt, again, it would have been nice to have this cloth. It's not, but she does have a ball joint at the at the hips there. So you can have full movement with the legs up and there is a, you can turn them. There is a slit there at the top as well. She does have full articulation there at the knees. It's amazing now when you look at these figures and you see how many figures come out that are pinless. Uh, but this one here, because the color is painted the same, it doesn't really get in the way. It's not really an eyesore. Uh, articulation, of course, at the ankles as well there. Okay. And she does have rocker ankles, which is awesome for 2015. You do have the option to, to pose her the way you want with those rocker ankles. Something that we just started seeing on three, three quarter inch figures, which is really nice. Uh, it's nicely painted here too, just on top of her ankle. The part, that part of the boot there stands out nicely. So that's what Leia Bouche Looks like from the front in the Black Series. Let's lift her up underneath. You can have a look. She does have foot pegs there. And of course, it does say uh, Hasbro underneath there. And I believe it says 2015 on one of the boots. It's kind of hard to make out, but that's underneath. That's what she looks like from the side. 
Okay, and then that's what she looks like from the back. And you can see they've, it's a nice cloth cape there as well to use. It's a, it's a thicker material. It's almost like a jean material. On this one over here, she does have that backpack as well, which is removable and it is painted just like the small version was. So they've painted that detail on there. They've gone realistic, realism wise, nicely on this figure. And you can see the back of her belt is painted there nicely. You can see the thermal detonator, which we'll look at in a second, in case you're wondering whether it's removable off that belt. So that's what Leia Bush looks like that way. So now if we lift her arm up over here, we can have a look at that thermal detonator and where it's placed on her belt. And if you just gently pull off, it comes off. The peg stays on the belt. It's not taking away from the dynamic or the look of the thermal detonator while it's off her belt. Let's just bring that up close just so you can see. Thermal detonator is painted nicely. It's got a nice little silver paint running around the front of it. Let's see if I can hold it so you can see. And then it's got the trigger there at the top. Okay. And that's pretty much it for that. That can rest in her hand. She doesn't have a peg in the hand. Obviously, that would probably take away from the figure. But if you know, if you position that rightly, you can have that thermal detonator resting in her hand. So she can attack or intimidate Jabba the Hutt, try to anyway. So that sits back nicely on the belt. Just find that little peg hole. That goes there. And it sits on there pretty sturdy. It's pretty firm, so you're not going to lose it, but it is a small accessory. You will want to keep an eye on that. It's very easy to lose. Uh, let's take her helmet off. We haven't looked at the figure without the helmet on. And that was the biggest problem I think I had with the Black Series figures at the time was the likenesses on the characters when you pulled their helmets off. It was very, very hit and miss when it first came out, and I was actually not collecting until they started getting the head sculpts better. So, ah, it doesn't really look like Carrie Fisher underneath there when you take the helmet off. She definitely does have a serious look to her face. Um, you can tell that it is supposed to be Princess Leia, but they had trouble trying to nail that likeness on the character. And it definitely, as a result, it needed a revisit. And you can see the head sculpt is nice. The hair sculpt, the way it sculpts around the back is nice. They just haven't been able to nail that likeness there on the front of the character. So a lot easier to have this character on your shelf with the helmet on than the helmet off because it doesn't really look like Princess Leia. So uh, there's the helmet itself. The helmet's a nice sturdy plastic. It's not soft. It sits nice and tight over her head. Over her head. Uh, you can see paint operations and we looked at already so that looks nicely on there but yeah that's the head sculpt for princess leia bush now i did want to mention something actually one of the things that inspired me to get this review of course i did have a uh, vintage collection version of her and i thought i think that's the ultimate version that we have for her uh, but we also just got an ultimate version of the black series one so the one i just showed you of course What's left to be desired is that the character doesn't have a very good head sculpt. So when Hasbro announced that they're going to re-release this character on as part of the archive wave, I wasn't really excited because I had the character. But when I saw the figure in person, when I watched reviews for this figure, and I see how much further they've come with the head sculpt, I had to get it. Because this way at least I can have one with the helmet on and then I can have one with the helmet off. And that's this one over here. Uh, you can see how much better the face sculpt is on this character on card back. And actually, uh, this review is going to inspire me to take it out of the package because there's one more thing I want to show you on Princess Leia in the Black Series. Okay, so here's the Black Series archive, Princess Leia and Boosh the Skies out of package. And the biggest thing that, of course, was drawing me attention-wise to this figure was the new head sculpt. I'm like, how much better is the head sculpt going to be? Because they're kind of hit and miss with the archive line. They're not really new figures. They're just figures that are re-released because they were hard to get and of course they'll fix up stuff on there but that head sculpt you can see is definitive is an amazing update to the previous one i'm going to put them side by side just to show you if you were debating whether to get this figure or not you may want to reconsider just by the head sculpts look at that it's like a completely different character you can look at it side by side the gone are those little rosy cheeks that she had and that facial expression and it looks a lot more like Princess Leia does from the original Star Wars movies. So that would be warranted, maybe even enough to get. But there's one other thing that kind of drove me um, to buy, purchase this figure. And that was that they've decided to retool the height of the character as well. 
So the character initially was always a little bit tall. The bush Leia was actually a big complaint even for me. Even when I have her position, I try to like position her where she's slouched a little bit so she's not standing up straight because she seems really tall. Well, they actually, even though it's an archive wave figure, they've retooled the figure height-wise so you can see, if I hold them side by side here, that she's shorter, which is awesome. She's The legs are shorter, so uh, she's to scale where she probably should be now in the movie and it, and it and it goes a long way for this character it goes a long way um um to fix her up to retool her and definitely make a definitive version of the black series uh princess leia and boost this guy so that's all i have for you guys today i hope that you've enjoyed the review again i love doing the reviews i love revisiting these characters watching how far they've come and i hope that you've stuck around this far and that if you haven't done so already you'll like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video take care